Over the last month, lots of things happened in the world of 3D. From new software releases and updates, to new 3D software and major changes. And other interesting news as well. So I will make sure in this video to get you guys the latest stuff in one place. Starting with something that a lot of you might like, Neki has just released Cascador Mobile, which is the AI-assisted animation and rigging software. Cascador is well known and it is widely used in 3D character animation for games and films. And it is especially used for its AI-assisted tools like auto-posing, auto-physics, and secondary animation features. Now, after almost a year of its announcement, Cascador has come to the mobile market. Well, only for the iOS market, but I think it's gonna be available for Android soon according to what they said. The mobile version of Cascador offers almost all the same features of the desktop version, with a simple and easy to use interface. Of course, with the addition of an AR mode to test and play with your characters inside your living room or the office or somewhere else. You can also export your animation from your mobile device to the desktop for further refinement. With other interesting news, we have the release of Unreal Engine 5.5, which has finally dropped, and there is a lot to unpack. From the lighting side, Megalites and Lumen got major updates. In a nutshell, Megalites allows you to add more dynamic lights to a scene without worrying about performance, and it works beautifully with Nanite for creating immersive environments, as you can see. In addition, Lumen now features sharper reflections and more realistic light bounces, especially on reflective surfaces like water and metal. It is generally a great combination for anyone working on detailed and visually rich projects. MetaHuman also received a boost with optimized versions that take up less space but still looks fantastic. In addition, the new audio-driven facial animation lets you sync dialogue to your characters without motion capture, which is a huge time saver. Also, animation tools have seen improvements too. Features like animation layers make it easier to tweak specific movements without affecting the entire sequence, and procedural content generation adds automation for placing assets in large environments, which I think will save you a ton of time on open-world projects. Next, we have Sketchsoft's newly released 3D sketching app for iPad, which is Feather 1.0. The app's first major update, making it a paid app. Not to be confused with Feather, which was released in 2022, and the most recent release being Feather 1.5, which was free. Well, till now at least. The 1.0 update introduces several exciting features, including support for pressure-sensitive sketching in addition to a 3D liquify tool, a revamped lighting system, and post effects like glow and depth of field. The update also includes a new dark UI, which will make your life easier if you like dark user interfaces. It also made sketching in the app up to 20 times faster, according to what they say. Additionally, the software is now fully offline, making the end of its web edition for the time being. And according to Sketchsoft, as a small team, Sketchsoft isn't yet able to support two products simultaneously, and hopefully the web version will return soon, as the web version remains the company's goal in the future. And it will be brought back, I mean when the stability issues with the iPad have been resolved. I often say that the future for 3D artists is always getting closer, and with each new tool that is being released, I find myself repeating those words. This time, it is because Runaways Act 1, a new tool designed to cut the time and effort for artists in their work. In a nutshell, Act 1 allows you to create animations from video and voice recordings. All you need is a camera and some acting skills, so you don't need any expensive tools or equipment that is needed in different projects. The results are also really good, sometimes impressive, making good quality animations with almost nothing and Act 1 share the same goals as many tools released recently, and that is to reduce the workload for 3D artists and artists in general. And with the advancements in AI technology, we are seeing a surge of apps designed for that purpose. And for me, anything that helps and doesn't take away from the creativity of artists is welcome to help to make our lives easier. 
In some unexpected and sad news, Foundry has announced that they are stopping the development of Moto, their 3D modeling tool, and according to the press release, this decision is made to concentrate on the development of their core software and develop new tools for the media and entertainment industry. Well, this decision came at the cost of Moto and its users as well. For now, Moto's users will continue to receive support for the duration of their contract and can even apply for a 10-year extended license to still be able to access Moto longer, but with no continued support updates and maintenance, which seems a little far-fetched, without forgetting the compatibility issues that can occur in the future, I mean the future operating systems and their updates. For now, Moto's downloads, documentation and support, in addition to other resources, will remain accessible till November 2025 with forms available till December 2024. And if you are using Moto and want a license transfer or additional support, you can contact Foundry directly. In other interesting news, there is a new version of D5 with version 2.9, which brought some features that can make your life easier for anyone working on architecture, design, or 3D visualization in general. One of the big highlights is the terrain sculpting and painting tools, which let you create and shape landscapes directly in D5, which is interesting considering it is a rendering software. You can sculpt areas up to 4x4 kilometers, adding textures and details without needing to jump into other 3D software. For construction and architectural walkthroughs, the new phasing animation feature is a solid addition. Basically because it simplifies showing by step-by-step -step assemblies or construction processes without the hassle of manual keyframing. And D5 has also expanded the post-AI style transfer tool, making it easier to add effects like watercolor, photorealism, and even voxelized looks when it comes to your renders. And the interesting thing, it works at resolutions of up to 6K, and you can refine details and textures for high-quality visuals. The update brings random asset placement too, which makes scenes feel more natural. Whether you are working with plants or furniture, you can randomize the size, rotation, and the position for a more organic look. On top of that, there is a bigger asset library with new character models and materials for indoor and outdoor spaces. And when it comes to heavier scenes, the FPS booster improves navigation by speeding up frame rates. And if you are a team user, the 3D Gaussian splatting feature lets you turn video footage into shareable 3D models that you can explore in the browser. Now let's switch gears and talk about the updates from the Illusion for character production and cartoon animation. They just rolled out a new AI-powered smart search system in Character Creator and iClone and their 3D character creation and animation software. This feature is all about making asset searches quicker and more intuitive. And I think this allows you to find what you need without leaving the software in a nice way because sometimes it gets boring or time-consuming. Smart Search is currently in beta and uses AI-driven tools to search for Illusion's online stores for assets that can match text plane descriptions in over a hundred languages, or even reference images. You can just drag and drop an image or enter a description like Medieval Warrior, and Smart Search will hopefully find relevant content. It can even locate assets similar to objects you already have in your scene. And this new feature is available in Character Creator 4.51 and iClone 8.51 both of which are free updates that come with additional bug fixes. And I think this integration makes it much easier for 3D artists to find the right content quickly without leaving your software and disrupting your workflow. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And to receive more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.